Hello, my name is Shirley Evans. I'm a Nutritional Sciences Doctoral Candidate at Oklahoma State University in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Our paper investigated the effects of mango powder supplementation in adults with obesity. Overweight and obesity have received considerable attention as major public health threats. In the U.S., more than 33% of adults and 17% of children and adolescents are obese. The problem with obesity is not just from the excess adipose tissue, but it is also a risk factor for chronic conditions such as diabetes and heart disease. 90% of type 2 diabetes has been found to be related to excess adiposity. Because of these problems, increased medical costs and a decreased quality of life have been associated with obesity. The body mass index, or BMI, is a tool most commonly used to classify overweight or obesity in adults. A BMI equal to or greater than 30 is considered obese. Diets high in fat and a lack of physical activity are known contributors to the development of obesity. As interventions, it has been found that several plants and their polyphenolic compounds have positive effects on adipose tissue. One fruit showing great promise is mango. In the last few years, in vitro and animal model studies on mango have focused on its antioxidant and anti-diabetic properties. Our recent animal study demonstrated that mango decreased body fat and improved blood glucose and lipid profile in mice fed a high fat diet. Mango is a tropical fruit that is a rich source of dietary fiber, potassium, and vitamins A and C. There are also many bioactive compounds in the different parts of mango fruits and plants. The objective of our research was to investigate the effects of 12-week daily mango supplementation on anthropometric measurements, biochemical parameters, and body composition in obese individuals. We hypothesized that the incorporation of mango pulp into the diet of obese adults would reduce body fat and improve glucose parameters. To prepare the mango powder, ripe Tommy Atkins mangoes were peeled, freeze-dried, ground, and packaged into 10-gram packets and stored in a freezer until consumed. This mango variety and dose were based on our earlier animal study. Each mango packet contained approximately 39 calories. The study design consisted of four visits after the pre-screening interview. Adults ages 20 to 50 years old with a BMI 30 to 45 were recruited throughout Stillwater, Oklahoma and its surrounding communities. Assessments included weight, height, circumference of waist and hip, fasting blood work, medical and physical activity questionnaires, three-day food records, and DEXA scans. At our Nutritional Sciences Laboratory, DEXA scans were used to measure total body composition and fat content in study participants. ANOVA and Repeated Measures model were used to evaluate the effects of mango powder supplementation at baseline and after 12 weeks. A p-value of less than 0.05 was considered statistically significant. Means and standard deviations were reported. No changes were observed in anthropometrics, body composition, blood pressure, and lipids in the 20 study participants as a group. Hip circumference was significantly lower in male, but not in female participants. There were no changes in nutrient intake before and after mango supplementation or physical activity between baseline and final measures. Overall, the 12-week dietary supplementation of mango significantly reduced blood glucose by 4.1 milligrams per deciliter. When analyzed by gender, the glucose lowering effects were also observed by gender in both female and male participants. 
Insulin levels in males were significantly increased after the 12-week supplementation period, but not in female participants. There were also no changes in glycated hemoglobin, which is an indicator of long-term glucose control, or in HOMA IR, an indicator of insulin resistance. In conclusion, mango supplementation decreased blood glucose in obese individuals, a population at risk for type 2 diabetes. Unlike our animal model in mice fed a high fat diet, mango supplementation was not able to modulate body composition in obese individuals. It may require a longer duration of supplementation to show a significant effect on body composition. The hypoglycemic effect of mango can be attributed partly to its polyphenolic compounds like mangoferrin that has been shown to interfere with the glucosidase enzymes, which would result in a decrease in intestinal glucose absorption. Future research needs to investigate the long-term effects of mango supplementation on obesity-related chronic conditions such as type 2 diabetes. We would like to thank the Nutrition and Metabolic Insights Journal for this opportunity to present our research.